The Labour Party used an NHS photo to lie about the Tories and we look at the story behind that photo and the fake news around it. Right, in case you haven't heard yesterday and actually over the last couple of days, there was a story in the Daily Mirror uh, which basically went around uh, the, the mainstream media in general, uh, which was about a four-year-old uh, kid who was in Leeds Hospital and there was a picture of him on the floor in the a and &E waiting for the doctors and this obviously completely uh, became a huge story on the day and uh, up to a point where uh, journalists were scrutinising Boris Johnson as uh, Prime Minister despite the fact that he's only been Prime Minister for a few months and uh, they're, they're blaming everything on him basically. Uh, we're we're going to look at the, uh, the story behind the photo uh, to, uh, in, in this video but also what happened with the with one of the interviews that uh, Boris Johnson did with ITV? Uh, ITV is also turning into a new version of Channel 4 in terms of fake news and spinning. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, the Daily Mirror front page said that a boy 4 is treated on the floor in hospital because there are no beds available. Now we're going to actually look into this and see if that's true. Spoiler alert, it's not. Now. Boris, uh, Jeremy Corbyn was doing a rally in Bristol and he took a massive advantage of this story. Uh, he was uh, speaking and uh, he had the, a copy of the, the mirror in his hand and he was talking about this story because apparently it's, this is the end of the world and it's all because of the Conservative government. Now ITV interviewed Boris Johnson uh, on this issue. Actually the interview was supposed to be about Brexit because Boris was stunned by making a speech about Brexit and uh, ITV is actually turning into a new version of Channel 4 when it comes to spinning and manipulating the uh, stories and uh, this happened. So according to the CNN and actually other outlets as well, during the interview the Prime Minister grabbed the reporter's phone and refused to look at, look at the photograph of a four-year-old boy. Now let's watch a clip of this interview to see what happened exactly. But we have you seen the photo Prime we Minister? Need making, have you seen no, the photo? I've been told about it by the BBC. You, but we need to be making investments. This is, the photo, this is the photo. We need to be making investments now and that's why we're putting 34 billion pounds This is the four-year-old boy Prime Minister that. suspected of pneumonia forced to lie on, on, on the floor on a pile of coats. I understand and, and obviously we have every possible sympathy for everybody who has a bad experience in the NHS. Look at it now this is Jack Willeman. Um, if, if you don't mind, I'll, 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 give you an, I'll give you an interview uh, now. What we, are, what we are doing is we are taking this country forward. Prime you refuse to look at the photo. You've no. taken my phone put it in your pocket, Prime Minister. His mother says the NHS is in crisis. What's your response to that? Oh, I'm sorry, look. I, 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 it's, a, it's a terrible, terrible photo. And, I'm, and I apologise, obviously, to the families and all those who, who, who have terrible experiences in the NHS. Well, as you can see, The Guardian and other outlets a claim that Boris Johnson refused to look at the picture of the boy. You can see he's looking at the picture. But as I said earlier, he could have actually done it sooner than that. He could have just looked at the photo and uh, briefly and say, I know the story, I'm going to find out more. And uh, the, the NHS is under pressure, all the usual lines, and then just move on. Uh, but I also know why he uh, tried to avoid it at the beginning, because he knew this was a trap. This was a gotcha type of uh, interview. And... He didn't actually survive, unfortunately, in this one. So now, as I said, in this video, we're going to look at the story behind that photo exactly and see what we know. Uh, but before we continue, if you're new to this channel and if you're enjoying the content, make sure you click on the subscribe button and the bell next to it so you get notified. I release videos every day at 5.45 p.m. Now, on the day, labor activists use their WhatsApp groups and everything to organize a massive uh, movement and protest to chase down Tory politicians uh, up and down the country, including Health Secretary Matt Hancock. Same on you, Matt Hancock. For your ward, sleeping on the floor in the hospital. Shame on you, sleeping on the floor. Shame on you, Matt Hancock, shame on you. Children sleeping on the floor of hospitals. And if you think this was bad, they're now preparing to milkshake Boris Johnson and other Tory politicians. Someone tweeted, we just waited out in the cold in Barnard Castle for home him, and that's Boris Johnson, at 3 p.m., but he decided not to show up. I had a milkshake ready and everything. There are other posts uh, with the actual website, milkshakeboris.com, that uh, would uh, basically recommend people to milkshake Tory politicians and the Prime Minister. This is a fundraising page to milkshake Boris, and the first person to milkshake him wins all the money in the fund. Now you wonder where all this is actually coming from. 
Well, when when you have senior politicians like John McDonnell and Jeremy Corbyn publicly advocating uh, this sort of behaviour, well, don't be surprised. I want to be in a situation where no Tory MP, no Tory MP, no coalition minister can travel anywhere in the country or show their face anywhere in public without being found. Now, going back to that NHS photo, the Labour Party are spinning uh, the whole story to blame the whole thing on uh, the, the Conservative government. Well, the problem with having a system like the NHS is that it's so centralised that obviously the government will get all the blame, unlike any other country. So any specific hospital or clinic that uh, don't treat uh, the patients properly, they're not going to get the blame. It's going to be the government, it's going to be the Prime Minister or the Health Secretary. And that's the problem, was one of the problems with the NHS. And these Labour activists who are going around and shouting about this seem to have forgotten all the stories that came under Labour. Apparently they've forgotten about what happened at Stafford Hospital with all the victims. They forgot about the babies born in hospital corridors. A bed shortage forced 4,000 mothers to give birth in lifts, offices and toilets in 2009. They forgot about the worst hospital scandal for 10 years in 2010 when it was revealed that Labour were having that had to have the biggest review of safety because of this. They forgot that because of Mid-Staffordshire uh, NHS problems, they had to have an inquiry, a public inquiry into this problem. And all this happened under Labour. Now, I'm not going to use the left-wing line of blaming everything on the Labour government because when a hospital don't know how to manage their organisation or a clinic, the first the point that we have to do, consider is the actual staff, the management and the staff, and if, especially if there's, there are specific nurses or doctors or staff members who should be blamed, or if it's a bigger problem, the management. Then you go to the top. Now, that's the problem we have with Leeds. Uh, there are having issues with uh, the emergency uh, section, the A&E, and uh, obviously that has to be reviewed, and the government's already said they're going to put a lot of money in it. But this story that was leaked and given to the, the mirror originally, the person behind it was a Labour, a Corbynista. The person behind this story is David Wrigley, who is a Corbynista who has suggested that the, that the NHS is for sales apparently under the Conservatives. This is the person behind this leak. Now we have a statement from uh, the hospital about what actually happened on that day. The hospital management said, we have seen a significant increase in the number of people visiting our pediatric emergency department and this week we saw the highest attendances uh, we have seen since April 2016. Despite this, our staff are working tirelessly to provide the best possible care under these extreme uh, pressures. Uh, Jack was quickly assessed upon arrival and seen in two different clinical treatment rooms in the pediatric emergency department. Within four hours, a decision was made to admit uh, Jack to our children's assessment and treatment unit for further monitoring overnight, which is basically their target. So they have basically hit their targets of four hours. Unfortunately, the, the unit was also experiencing exceptionally high levels of demand, which meant that Jack was required to wait in the clinical treatment room in the pediatric emergency department until a bed became available. Jack was admitted to uh, the CAT unit later that evening and uh, was dis discharged home the following morning. Now, when it comes to that photo of Jack on the floor, the staff and the management of the hospital have denied. They said that uh, just like any other hospital, when it's busy, when you have to wait, they give a chair to the patient and the parents. And uh, they, they've done the same apparently to Jack. And they don't put patients on the floor. They've said because one, hygiene is a problem. And two, health and safety because people need to walk in the, on the, in the corridors and you can't really block anyone. Now, on social media, there were a lot of we had a number of nurses and doctors uh, telling their story and how they work and how this story could not be true. But we also had some fake news. So we have to clarify, there was a lot of fake news going around, including this specific post that was going around uh, that started by saying, very interesting, a good friend of mine is a senior nurse at Leeds Hospital. And it goes on. This was massively denied. This is fake news. Uh, this was never actually confirmed. The person who uh, started sending this, but people were starting basically to copy and paste it. So this was ignore this. But there were a number of others, uh, actual people who work in hospitals. Uh, one person said, "I work in a very busy London A and E. We don't let anyone lie on the floor as a general rule, let alone a child with an O2 mask. Even if it's busy, you prioritize beds for those that need them." 
that this is sick labor propaganda. You might ask why we don't let people lie on the floor? Well, infection control, the floor is filthy, and also health and safety. A&E is busy with heavy trolleys moving everywhere all the time. Also, a person on the floor is a trip hazard, and, yeah, as I said before. And we even had Alison Pearson retweeting a tweet uh, from someone saying, I worked as a nurse for 20 years and no nurse would let a four-year-old sick child lie on the floor. Another tweet said, as if the NHS staff would not hang the IV drip bag or offer blankets instead of him lying on a coat. His mom just put him on the floor and snapped a photo. Now, some of these stories that came on, on social media were true, some of them fake news, but the sentiment is there. And uh, I, my, my mother uh, is a nurse uh, herself, and I've also spoken to her about this, and it shouldn't happen. It's not normal practice. If it has happened, it's a, the fault of the specific nurse or staff member to don't go around basically targeting the whole Department of Health. It doesn't work that way. And this is, because as I said, it goes back to the whole issue of the NHS because it's so centralized that instead of holding the staff and the management of a specific hospital to account, the easiest thing to do is just blame Prime Minister. And it's not right because this is not how you make reforms. And But people aren't stupid because, we, again, we've seen the polls recently. Uh, people still trust Boris Johnson and the Tories more than Labour because of the, all this propaganda. The latest numbers uh, that said which of the following would be best for the NHS. Uh, Conservative government led by Boris Johnson and Matt, Matt Hancock, 44%. Labour led by Jeremy Corbyn and Ashworth, 37%. Now, we mentioned Jonathan Ashworth. Uh, we're actually going to release another video straight after this later tonight about Jonathan Ashworth, uh, who had his conversation leaked about his views on Jeremy Corbyn's leadership. So uh, make sure that you subscribe and click on the bell next to it so you get notified when that video comes out. Uh, if you uh, enjoy the content, obviously, we are now almost at 95,000 subscribers. So thanks again for supporting. If you want to support this channel, we have our merchandise site. And uh, obviously, we have various t-shirt designs and merchandise. Uh, if you want to buy a Christmas present for a friend or a family member, we have the All I Want for Christmas is Brexit t-shirts and this comes in the form of other merchandise, coffee mugs and everything else. So check it out. The link is in the description and make sure you follow me on social media, Twitter and Instagram. You can find the details on the screen down here. As always, I'm Mario Tisi and I'll see you guys in the next video.